So this is the fifth tutorial in the Action Script 3 for game series, and it's called If Statements. Now, I'm pumped because if statements are they're just they're just great. There's nothing else to say about it. Now, this tutorial could also be called 4.5 instead of 5 because we're gonna actually use a lot of operators. But these are ones that wouldn't really make any sense if you weren't using them in an if statement. If you weren't comparing something, you wouldn't use these operators. So I've held them back and included them in the if statement tutorial. And it, it deserves that name. So anyway, blah, blah, blah. Get to the code, right? So um, what we got here is our, our standard project file that you already know. And instead of using the trace window like I did the last two tutorials, I'm going to use our same uh, hello underscore text dynamic text box because it's a little easier to see than uh, constantly showing you the top left corner of the screen. So anyway, we've got our number variable. It's equal to five. And we've got this piece of code that will make us make sense in a second when we create our first if statement. Now. So what we're going to be using if statement, obviously, when you're testing something. You're saying, if this is whatever I'm at, I'm saying it is, do this. So it's an if do. If this, do that. And you can, and so let's start, let's start off with, before I go and convolute things for you. Let's get right to it. If num, now our first new operator here for comparing Instead of that one equal sign, we're going to use two equal signs. Let me let me step back before I lose you and say what this is. So this one equal sign here is for setting a value. This is an important distinction. It's one of the most common syntax mistakes that new programmers make. I made it countless times years ago. And so, so here... The single equal sign, once again, is for setting a value. Now, it doesn't matter if you're doing it when you first create the variable or later on by saying num is equal to 7. You're setting that variable to this new value. So you're using a single equal sign. The double equal sign is for, test is for testing a quality, not for setting a value. Once again, single sets of value, double tests equality. So we're saying in this expression, if num is equal to 5, if it's equal to 5, if that's a correct, we make these curly braces, which are also used in functions. Guess why? Because if is technically a function. I, I going on that statement. I, I think that's correct. More advanced programmer, maybe I'm wrong, but I think if is a function. So these curly brackets uh, denote the beginning and closing of a function, which you're going to see when we write our own. So here we go. If num double equal sign is equal to 5, then we're going to say, I'm going to copy and paste this into the into the if statement where we want it. We're going to say, yup, it matches in our text box right here. Yup, it matches because it does. Now, if I say, is number equal to 10? We know it's not. So this piece of code is never going to be touched because the first if statement is, is not correct. So there's no reason to go there. So you can see, blank. There's nothing in this text box. We're not putting anything into it. So let's try, that's a bare bones if statement. And it's, it's, it's using the double equal sign to test equality. So let's, let's extend this if statement one further which is, it's the same concept. Oh, sorry about that. 
time machine. Get in my way, time machine. So let's say, okay, it's not, I'm going to put a space here, make it easier. Okay, if it's equal to 12, if it's equal to 10, do this. Else, if it's equal to 15, we're going to put a second bracket here. Let's say, copy that. Just, just so you can distinguish it here. Yup. It's 15. All right. Let's change this to. <coughs> Excuse me. Yup, it's 10, all right. Gotta, gotta include the exclamation point because it just makes everything sound better, right? Neither. Still blank because it's neither. So, so we can actually print something out. I'm going to change the starting value to 15. And since I'm not changing it anywhere else in here, it's going to stay at 15. Yep, it's 15, all right. It sure is, isn't it? So what's happening here is, remember once again, the code is read by the computer from top to bottom. So we set our variable to 15, our first if statement, if it's equal to 10, do this. Nope, it's not right now. Okay, if it's not, is it equal to 15? Yes, it is. So we print this into our dynamic text box. So this is an if else statement. And just so you can continue to write more, you know, I'm not going to do it because it's belaboring the point, but if it's equal to 20, right? Yep, it's 20. And you can continue it as long as you have these opening, closing, as long as you have the same format. You can continue to write else ifs. And to give you a new piece of information, try not to repeat myself too much here. Um, I'm just trying to get a hang of the, the speed in which to, to go over this stuff. But please leave comments and let me know if I'm going too slow or too fast, and I'll, I'll judge by, by that. Try to get better. I'm sorry, I don't need this. Here. So this, this is the last sort of piece of this whole thing. So what we've got here is three separate pieces of syntax here, but three separate commands for ActionScript. Let's get us some more space so we're not so clumped up, right? Oh. is moving a little slow with the screen recorder on. There we go, Flash. All right. So what we've got here, if num is equal to 10, do this. If it's if else if, which by the way does not run if this one is correct. That's, what's, that's what the else command that's an important distinction to make. If this is actually equal to 10, then this will this will display and it will stop. So this is one whole piece. This is actually one whole, even though it's multiple statements, it's a whole chunk. And it doesn't end until it either finds a value or it reaches this statement here. But it's important to note that if this is correct, it's going to stop. If this is correct, it's also going to stop. This else command is useful at the end of a block of if else statements. It's useful at the end for this reason because it's the default. Hello.text. default. It's a boring old response. So let's just change this back to 5. So if it's equal to 10 this, if it's equal to 15 this, and if it's not, which it isn't, you guessed it, default. So 
we're going to spit out the default response. So this might be good for, I mean, you know, you can think of a variety of reasons. It's, it's uh, you could have a, a, a text box, which would be an input text box, this type here. Oh, we're not going to use that now. You could have it uh, check if the person had put in their name. And if, say, if, you know, if the person's name was this, say, hi, hi, Mike, or if the person's name was Alex, hi, Alex, and your else statement could be, please input your name, if they, and it would check to see if they had already created a name, just to give you an idea of the usefulness of this, or just any sort of standard response that you want the computer to do if the ones before it do not match. So I hope that makes sense. And just to throw a few more of the operators in, I'm going to erase this and just show you a couple other ones, which are actually simpler than what I've been covering here. So, so let's say we're going to work with a few other operators, which are should be pretty common to you. Let's just start with this one so we get something. Say, so we're going to say, we'll just change it to yup. We're, we're, not, we're not really going to talk too much to this thing. So what we're saying here is if num is less than, remember from math, less than, greater than, that's less than. If it's less than 10, then we do print it out. It's now equal to 5, so yup. Now, greater than 10? Nothing. Because, uh, sorry, let me close this here. Got some noise outside, sorry about that. Um, it's not greater than 10, so we don't see anything. So now, what if it were to include the other one? Let's match this to 5, and let's say. Well, less than won't work, right? So, but what about less than or equal to? So, five is less than or equal to five. It's equal to. So, that'll work. Same thing with this, greater than or equal to, because it's, it's equal to. One more, one more one to include, which is, which can be very helpful, is this, which means not equal to. Now, it's not going to print right now. We get nothing, right? Because this is saying if num is not equal to 5. Well, you see that it is. So if it's not equal to 7, so now that should print. Because num is not equal to 7, it's equal to 5. So these are completely crucial if statements, if else statements, and you can string a whole lot together, you can use them in a million different ways. And it's one of the best things to cover early on because it's pretty simple. It's it's one of the few moments in programming where you get a little bit of common language mixed in there. I mean, programming languages are trying to get more common, more easy to understand. And the if statement and the if else statement, it's it's nice because it's it's sort of literal. If this, do this. Else, do this. I hope that made sense. And um, yeah, that, that's pretty much it. Thanks for watching. Please subscribe.